We are an Easter people, so we are a joyful people. Jesus has conquered death, broken over our tools of sin and despair, and redeemed us in our humanity. Animated by the Holy Spirit, we live in the light and light of Christ, spreading that light and life unto those around us. Let our hearts be glad and tongues of exalt as we lift our voices in praise to God. The readings from Mass can be found on page 610 of Mass.
May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of the resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed, all of you stand in Jerusalem. Let this be known to you, and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commended to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs, which God worked through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This man, delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed, using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Therefore my heart has been glad, and my tongue has exalted. My flesh, too, will dwell in hope, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus. Of this we are all witnesses. Exalted at the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father who poured him forth as you see and hear. The word of the Lord. Lord. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as Father him who judges impartially according to each one's works, conduct yourselves with reverence during this time of your soldiering, realizing that you were ransomed from your futile conduct handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a spotless, unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. But him they did not see. 
and he said to them oh how foolish you are how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke was it not necessary that the christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory then beginning with moses and all the prophets he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures as they approached the village to which they were going he gave the impression that he was going on further but they urged him stay with us for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over so he went in to stay with them and it happened that while he was with them at the table he took bread said the blessing broke it and gave it to them with that their eyes were opened and they recognized him but he vanished from their sight then they said to each other were now our hearts burning within us why he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us so they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying the lord has truly been raised and has appeared to simon then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread the gospel of the lord praise to you lord jesus christ dear brothers and sisters in jesus christ today's gospel opens with the two disciples from the road to emmaus telling their story of how they met the risen christ in the breaking of the bread which is eucharist they were actually they were actually walking away from the community of apostles and Christ's followers that means leaving the church it wasn't because they were big sinners it was just that the cross the tragedy of good friday had scared them away we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem israel they say to the stranger as they walk back to their old lifestyles sad and disappointed they simply can't understand how salvation can come out of the cross victory out of defeat so they give up we do face the temptation of fear and discouragement when crosses come into our lives like what we face these days i was thinking when i was preparing the homily about catholics who have left the church just as these two disciples were leaving jerusalem because the cross crushed their hope and they became cynical angry what will prevent us from abandoning our lord and our hope when we feel the weight of the cross the same thing that rescued these two sad disciples the first conversation with christ which is prayer and the second breaking of the bread which is eucharist saint john chrysostom asked how many of you say i should like to see his face his garments his shoes you do see him you touch him you eat him he gives himself to you not only that you may see him but also to be your food and nourishment sadly though many catholics say 
They have not encountered the risen Christ at Holy Communion, but only a symbol. We, like the disciples from the Emmaus walk, are on a journey from death to life, from sin to grace, from slavery to freedom, and from this world to heaven. Christ comes as food and drink to sustain us on this journey. In the sixth chapter of John's Gospel, Jesus said, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread which I shall give for the life of the world is my flesh. After he said this, there was a fight among the Jews and his disciples about the meaning of these words. Jesus didn't stop and say, Gentlemen, I am merely speaking to you of a symbol. No, he ups attention by saying, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Sadly, many of Jesus' disciples abandoned him that day. Jesus turned to his apostles and asked, Will you also go away? Peter replied, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, and we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. This is what we confess at this Mass and every Mass and on every altar around the world. For St. Francis of Assisi said, In this world I cannot see the Most High Son of God with my own eyes, except for His most holy body and blood at communion. This is not a symbol, but truly the real presence of the risen Christ that we are invited to approach. For St. Jerome said, it is dangerous to try to get to heaven without the bread of heaven. So my dear brothers and sisters, when we participate in this Mass and receive the law spiritually, we realize that God can bring good even out of the greatest evils. Just as He brought salvation and the resurrection out of the horrible failure of the crucifixion. As a result, we have strength to weather any storm that comes our way. We don't have to understand why God permits certain hardships and sufferings, because we already know that in the end, He will never let us down. So the Christian can pray, persevere, and find hope even amidst tears and terrible darkness, because we know that Christ's victory will be ours if we stay by His side. Amen. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in our Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all angels, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made. Consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord Receive, O Lord, we pray, these, <coughs> these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, we you. And with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to love you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chance, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chance to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chance of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this 
in memory of me.
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. The power and the glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my life, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Now let us receive the risen Lord in the spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Saint Michael, your angel, defend us in the Lord. Be our defense against the wickedness and sinners of the devil. Be thou the rebuke in me whom we pray. And to thou, o Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell, Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the souls.